Hello, I'm going to explain how to graph sinusoidal functions and changes to the plane sign graph in this video. All right, so the first thing I think that we should start off with is a new definition of angles. A lot of times people think of angles as existing in right triangles, but we need to think about angles existing in a coordinate plane. So to start off with angles in the coordinate plane, always have their initial ray here on the positive x-axis and positive rotation of angles moves in the counterclockwise direction. Negative angles go in the clockwise direction. Like that. Okay. Um, so with that being said, let's take a look at some basic angles. If this is where angles start, that would be zero degrees, the positive x-axis. Then that means that a rotation of 90 degrees would be here. So therefore, this would be a 90 degree rotation. 180 degrees would be 90 plus another 90. And similarly, 270. And then 360 would be back here where zero is. And then if we continued 90, 180, 270, 360, 450. So this would also be 450 up here and 540 over here, 630, 720, etc. Okay, so with that being said, that's how angles work in this new coordinate setting. The new definition of sine, sine used to be opposite over a hypotenuse, but the new coordinate definition of sine is that it's the y-coordinate, as in the x comma the y. So it doesn't matter what the x is, only the y, divided by the r, where r is like the radius of a circle. OK, so with that being said, we mathematicians very often like to have an r equal to 1. And if the r is equal to 1, then this equation right here turns into sine of theta equals y over r. And if r is 1, then you have y over 1, which is just the y value. And when that happens, when r is equal to 1, it's called when r is equal to 1, that leads to something called the unit circle. Unit, the prefix uni meaning one, like uniform, unicycle, unit circle. It means a circle of radius one. Okay, so let's make a table of the plane sine function. All right, so when sine is zero degrees, we have when theta is, sorry, when theta is zero degrees, we have an angle that looks like that. And what is the y coordinate if for any point on this positive x-axis? Well, this is gonna be whatever comma zero. And if the radius is one, then we have one comma zero. I'm just gonna draw a kind of circle just so we can be looking at that. I know that's a lumpy circle, but it works. We have a y of zero. So therefore, the sine of theta, the sine of zero would equal zero. What about up here? Well, at 90 degrees, where are we? Well, we're not left or we're not right, so our x is 0. What is our y? Our y is as high as it can go, 
it is the radius, which in this case would be 1. So therefore, the sine of 90 is 1. Keep doing that over here for 180. This is at negative 1, comma, 0. Again, the y is 0. Continuing that, we get down here, 0, comma, negative 1. So our y is negative 1. And then over here, back to 360, notice it shares the same y as 0 degrees. So we have that. Now, what happens if we graph the points in this table? Well, they look like this. One, negative one. Let's go 360. Half of that's 180. Half of that's 90. Three quarters is 270. Okay, so if we graph 0, comma 0, that's right here. If we graph 90, comma 1, that's up here. 180, comma 0 is right here. 270, comma negative 1, right here. 360, comma 0 is here. And if you were to graph more points, it would make this shape. Which is a shape called... A sinusoid. Okay, now that we have this, the plane sine function, this is a graph of the function y equals sine of theta. The function. Notice we have this, which we can call the theta axis, and this is the y axis. In the IMP textbook, this was z equals and therefore this was the z-axis. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's do the example for 10 sine theta. So firstly, let's make a table. For theta, I'm just going to compare this, our table for sine of theta. What if it's now 10 sine of theta? Well, that means the 10 is joined to this by multiplication. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take the values in sine theta, which are these values, and we're just going to multiply them by 10. So instead of 0, 1, 0, negative 1, we're going to have 0 times 10, 1 times 10, 0 times 10, negative 1 times 10, whoops, and 0 times 10. What does the graph of that look like? Well, instead of going up to having its biggest value at 1 and its smallest value at negative 1, which is why we had to have our biggest value at 1 and our smallest value at negative 1, this one would need to have its biggest value at 10 and its smallest at negative 10. And then it would look exactly like our other one. Instead of exactly like the other one. The only difference is that instead of this point being at 90 degrees comma 1, our maximum point now is at 90 degrees, comma, 10. It's the only difference. And we can check that on Desmos. Here goes a graph of the plane sine function. Notice 90 degrees, comma, 1. And watch what happens if I put 
a 10 here. Now our maximum point is at 90 comma 10. So again, if I take this back, it's the plane sign function with the maximum at 91, 90 comma one that is. And now when I put 10, it stretches out. And this might make it even more visible. Let me put a slider right there. What happens if I slide this all the way to 10? There you go. Okay. So now you are going to practice. Let's see. What does it look like if we have... Let me close this. What would happen if I put a one half here? Pause the video and think to yourself, what would happen when I turn this on? What is the graph going to look like? Okay, I'm assuming that you have paused the video and that you have found your answer and let's see, what does it look like? So if this is the plane sign function, let's turn this one blue. So if the red one is the plane sign function, what happens when we put a one half in front of it? Well, it gets one half as big. Instead of going through 90 comma one, now it's going through 90 comma one half. Okay, next one. What happens if, we saw what happens if you multiply by some number, what happens if we add some number, like five. Now here, let me put this in red. When we had y equals, oh, and I put x. Why don't I just change that to theta real quick? Why don't I just write that neater? Y equals five plus sine theta. All right, if we have Y equals sine of theta with no five, we know what that looks like. That's gonna look like this, zero, 90, 180, 270, 360. It's gonna look like zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. But now what happens if we add five to it? Well, let's see. This is theta, this is sine of theta, and let's make this five plus sine of theta and turn it into a in out table with two outs. Well, we're just gonna take the values from sine theta and we're gonna add five to them, so zero, plus five, okay, that's five. One plus five, six. Zero plus five, five. Negative one plus five is gonna be four, and then zero plus five is five. So what is that gonna look like? Well, it's gonna look like we had before. Zero, zero, one, negative one, 360, 180, 270, and 90. So instead of going through 
these points like this red sketch we're going through these points five six and four those are way up here one two three four five six so zero one two three four five is right here one oh sorry 90 comma six is way up here 180 comma five here and so on until we get this let me put it in black to match we get that we go back to desmos and look at that let me put this in black now what happens if we take this and add five to it where did it go oh it went there and instead of being at 90 comma one we're now at 90 comma six instead of being at 180 comma zero we're now at 180 comma five so all the points are basically why is not graphic okay so let's practice one more time all right what would it look like to have a graph of let's say let's say a graph of y equals one plus two sine theta so pause the video and see if you can graph this on your own Okay, I'm assuming you've paused. Maybe you need a hint. Uh, for a hint, I'd say that there's two numbers going on, and so each one of those is going to do a certain thing. What is the two going to do to it? Well, we know that when there's a number in front that's being joined by multiplication, that that stretches it. It's a vertical stretch. So this two is going to stretch it. If we have... We know that just sine of theta is going to give us values like 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. But if we multiply it by 2, let's put this in blue. Let's say it was 2 sine of theta. We know everything is going to be multiplied by 2. But now if it's 1 plus 2 sine theta, we know that we're going to take these values from 2 sine theta and we're going to add 1 to them. So 1 plus 2 sine theta, add 1 to everything, 0 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 0 plus 1, negative 2 plus 1, 0 plus 1. And it looks like that. So we can graph those by hand, or once again, go to Desmos. Let's see what happens. Oops. OK. So like we said, if we multiply by 2, that stretches everything, and if we add one out front, there we go. So notice the two stretches and the one shifts it vertically. If I made this A and this K, When I press K to play K, that only controls the shift. Let's pause K, take it back to zero. Whereas A stretches. Watch what happens when A gets negative. It flips it. That's called inverting. 
Okay. And if we do both, if we shift the K up to one, and then stretch the A out to two, we get that graph. Okay, last thing. We've messed with the vertical stretch. We've messed with the vertical shift. But what happens if there's a coefficient here in front of the theta? Well, for that, let's look back at an equation like this, the Ferris wheel platform height. So first of all, let's review what we've, what we've got here. The 50, sorry, let's start with the 65. What does that do? Since that's a number being added, it's the vertical shift. So it shifts this up to 0, 0,65. Instead of starting at 0, 0, we're shifted up. Actually, here, let's type this in. Y equals sine of theta. So when we add, let's add a K to it. When we add the 65, let's go up to 65. I'm just going to pull it all the way up to that. Now, what about the 50? Let's add in a vertical stretch factor and let's make it go up to 50. You're not going to really see this. But it goes up to 50, which you can see right there. So what is this last thing? Well, the 9 is the angular velocity. Where did that come from? Well, that came from if we have a period of 40 seconds, 360 degrees divided by that period of 40 seconds equals 9 degrees per second. And so if we have that 9 from right here in the equation as a coefficient inside the sine function, then that means that our period is going to be 40 seconds. So there you go. Oh, I know why it's not sticking. Oh, wait, no, I don't. So it finishes a complete cycle in 40 seconds. So when we have a function that doesn't have a coefficient in front, we that's going to affect the period. What is the coefficient in front? Well, really, it's like a 1. And so instead of having... this with the 9, where we know that if we do 360 degrees divided by this number, 9 degrees per second, we get 40 seconds for the period. So if there's nothing in front of that number, if it's just like 65 plus 50 sine of t, if there's just a implied 1 here, what does that mean? Well, that means we have 360 degrees divided by one degree per second, which is just going to be 360 seconds for the period, which is why over here, if you zoom out, the period is 360 degrees. Here we go, 360 degrees. So let's do an example for that. What would happen if we had a graph 
we had to graph the function y equals sine of 6 theta. Well, let's see. I know that this is the angular speed. So 360 degrees divided by that angular speed. You can do that in the calculator and get 60 seconds. So that means I know it's going to take 60 seconds to make one complete period. So if I go back to my initial work here, in this table, it took 360 degrees to make a complete period. But now it's going to take 60, 60 seconds. So if this is 60, everything else is related to that. This was 360, and this was half of it. So half of 60 would be 30. 90 degrees was half of 180, so half of that, half of this is 15. And then 270 is halfway in between these two, halfway in between these two is 45. So my graph would look like this. So basically it's the same as before. One, negative one. Except instead of going from 0 to 360, it's going to go from 0 to 60. Half of that is 30. Half of that is 15. Three quarters of that is 45. And it does exactly what it did before. It still has that shape. Except now, instead of being 90 comma 1, it's 15 comma 1. Let me go back over here and let's look at y equals sine theta. Let me make this green. What happens if I put a slider there? Well, I want this to be a 6. Let's see what happens. If I slide it to a 6, well, hold on a second. I'm in radians. Let me switch this real quick. Okay. Oops. There we go. Watch what happens if I slide this over to a 6. Notice our peak here is at 15 comma 1 instead of 90 comma 1. Okay, time for you to practice. What would happen let me turn this off. Actually, let me turn it purple. And what would happen if this was a 10. What would the graph look like? Pause your video and see if you can find what it would be at with the coefficient of 10 there. Okay, I'm assuming that you have paused. If we have an angular speed of 10, 360 degrees divided by 10 degrees per second equals 36 seconds. So instead of going all the way to 360, it would just go to 36. Half of that, 18. Half of that, 9. 3 quarters would be 27. 
And the graph would look like this. Instead of having a peak at 90 comma 1, its peak would be at 9 comma 1. Wow. That's really zoomed in, or that's really horizontally compressed. But look at that, 9 comma 1. And how long does it take to make its period? 36.